Welcome to Pint in the Sky. We are we are not in a pub right now. We are at A and U, um, in a conference room, and uh, we are very lucky to have Henry Reich from Minute Physics here with us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Very excited. Yes. Um, so so we're in Canberra because of a big sort of SciComm event thing, and uh, so we're talking to a few people here. Um, and we are big fans of your work, and it is awesome. Um, I've always been curious. How do you how do you get started with something like that? Like, what what was the uh, initial idea? How did you sort of um, decide I'm going to draw pictures about physics and you know be awesome on the internet? What yeah. was the uh, <laughs> where be a YouTube begin? superstar? Yeah. Well, I think that the key is that if you want to be a YouTube superstar, you should not set out to be one because that will be a recipe for failure. Right. Um, okay. The the recipe for success is to do something that you're passionate about, and if you do it well, then you'll be successful in whatever that happens to be, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I got started doing this because um, I was, I've was i always been interested in film and video as like a side hobby to doing physics and math as you know, school stuff. Yep. Um, and then after I did my master's in physics, I went and... I went to LA and got this job working with these guys who have a YouTube channel, which is called Freddy W, and they do these action, special effects, comedy kinds of things. Get millions of views every every video. Um, so I that's how I learned that YouTube was a thing that you could make content for, rather than just a place where people would put content from, you know, bootlegged videos from other things okay. or like cat, you know, cat videos, videos. Cat videos yeah. you know, yeah. sort of thing like yeah. home videos. But no, people actually create content specifically, intentionally for YouTube. And that was the first time I realized that. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, wait, this is interesting. I wonder if there, if I were to do something and you know, make videos, because I like to make my own things in addition to working on, you know, working for other people doing, you know, special effects. I wanted to do something that was more, that had more kind of intellectual interest. Um, and so physics seemed the natural thing because that's what I know the most about. Mm -hmm. And I also, I had given talk at my, college in Iowa where I'd gone um, about my, my master's thesis research and when I gave that talk I realized you know I'm talking to undergraduate students some of which have, are like first year first semester undergrad physics students how can I you know exp and you're explaining theoretical physics research which normally is just incredibly dense math right. so it's like how do you so explain this to, <laughs> to undergraduate students and I ended up just drawing lots and lots of pictures because I didn't the thing was that I didn't want to skimp on the on the, the Interest the, the, the details the, because that's what that's what's interesting is the is the, all the dense details that you're going into. So I didn't want to skimp on the math, but I didn't want to spend you know three years teaching them differential geometry either. So sure. so I had to take the shortcut and and I ended up drawing lots of pictures and stick figures. I can't draw at all, so the only thing I can draw is stick figures, which is yeah. the whole reason that that's what I do. Okay. Um, okay. And so that's how I got started. I after doing that I that talk and. I just started making these videos just for fun, I, and and that didn't stop. So, so was the aim to to actually educate, um, or was it to really, I don't know, amuse yourself? I guess it kind of follows on with yeah. it. Also, how do you pick the topics? Yeah, I guess the aim is to kind of to make people aware of. Um, Things that they may not have been aware of before, and then also to answer questions and try to help explain things to gain to get some sort of intuitive insight into how maybe how to think about a problem or how to think about mm -hmm. a question you have about the way the world works. So there's some explanation teaching. You know, people teach. You can I don't want to call it teaching because in order to learn something, really the the learning is on the onus of the student. You know, the, mm -hmm. somebody who wants to learn something has to actually sit down and tackle it with themselves and come to an understanding themselves with, yeah. with the material and this you know applies across all of education. You know, if you want to learn to play violin you have to practice violin like hours every day. Yeah. You don't listen to other people play violin. Or even listen to people talk about how to play violin. Like yeah. those things okay. will help you if you're also doing the practice. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean I've noticed that uh, one of the um, if you can call it a theme, but uh, of your videos is, is that you go through the scientific method, right? Like you actually are describing how to solve the problem, not just the cool solution, um, which, yeah. is, which is a really nice thing. So I guess is that an, um, was that a, a, a choice you made early on? This is an express thing? Yeah, so, well, I would say a lot of my videos actually I don't think have all of that aspect. Like, there's certain videos that I just explain how things work or how we currently understand them to work. Mm -hmm. But I, I like to try to m mention and allude to the fact that this is how we currently think these things work and this isn't you know some god-given 
truth, you know, yeah. because that's the, the whole idea of science is that people are figuring this out, and certain things we know are true with greater levels of certainty or lesser levels of certainty, and to always keep that sort of thing in mind. And I think it helps humanize it as well and make people mm -hmm. realize that it is that it's not just some crazy genius that did this. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, Einstein. People always think of Einstein as this amazing genius, and yes, he was an incredibly smart, smart person. But a lot of the things he figured out, he happened to be in the right place at the right time, right. and the, the jumps he made, the intellectual leaps he made, were not actually as big as we think they are coming from. You know, when you're when you learn them, you learn them in this weird way where you start with classical physics and then have this like crazy idea, this crazy theory, and then it turns out to be true. No, that's not at all how it, how it actually went. Yeah. And so helping people understand that there was actually really, really good scientific reasons that pointed him in the right direction. And we're also pointing a lot of other people in the right direction. Yeah. And everyone was working towards this thing, and he just happened to get there first. So you're trying to say that there's no such thing as an isolated genius? Yeah, exactly. Link I <laughs> to Katie's uh, uh -oh. description of exactly this. Yeah, no, so I, I, um, one of the things I find uh, frustrating sometimes about the way that science is sometimes communicated is um, people get the impression that physics, especially theoretical physics, is just you know, there's a genius in a room somewhere who just comes up with a thing, and it's revolutionary. And that person has never talked to anyone else, and then they just they just come up with this theory, and it solves everything, and it's amazing, and it's like sort of genius miracle thing. And so I I think it's great whenever um, the sort of not incremental necessarily, but you know, logical progression of science is portrayed as you know not just it comes out of nowhere because someone's so incredibly smart they just you know intuit the universe, yeah. um, but you know it's actually collaborative, you know, it comes out of conversations, it comes out of uh, previous work and building upon that and, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants and all of that kind of thing, rather than just, you know, um, you know, there's a genius and, and they, they just did that thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot like art in many ways, where yeah. art is often derivative, all art is derivative, it's based on previous art, and it's this gradual progression of pushing the boundaries of what people think art is, or mm -hmm. making slight changes, and you're inspired by, I mean, I'm inspired by XKCD, for example, you know, it's <laughs> In some ways, it's it's like you could say yes, I draw stick figures because stick figures are simple. But I also will know of XKCD and like mm -hmm. I'm yeah. aware of that as a as an existing you know work of art as well or yeah. science, like yeah. science communication. I mean, many XKCD is science outreach as well. Oh, the number uh, of times so. when you especially you know you help the the mice over the image and you get this description, you're like, I'm gonna have to wiki this. <laughs> I don't know what this guy is. It's amazing. Yeah, I think as well, like a, a lot of people. Part of the reason that I am so focused focused on explaining um, the scientific method aspects of it and the and the experimental verification is because people have this idea that theoretical physics is just complete, you know, sitting in a room thinking of crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand that the word theory doesn't just mean like any idea. I mean, it does mean any idea you come up with, but when you talk about, you know, you also have to talk about whether the theory applies to the universe or not, and they right, use yeah. experimental evidence. And you, all these, you get all these, I get lots of emails, and I'm sure you, as working physicists, get emails from people who are crackpots who have their own theory of the universe that solves everything. Mm -hmm. And they're the, they're the people who are working in isolation, completely yeah. disconnected from the entire work of science that has gone before them. Yeah. And in order to combat that, I think I, that's why I try to focus on actual like, connections with experience experiment and what work that other people have done. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also often, like, my favorite response now, that anytime somebody sends me, like, their theory of everything, I just ask them, you know, what does it predict for the magnetic moment of the electron or something like that? <laughs> and, and if they, you know, normally they, that shuts them up because their theory does not predict anything for the magnetic yeah. moment right, of right. the electron. So. Yeah. Okay. Or they have no clue, you know. I often find a, a really uh, quick way to sort through maybe the crackpot emails is, is to see how many colors the email's written in. <laughs> and if it's more than two, then it's that's a bad sign. I had eight once and I was like, wow, yeah. I actually saved that. I have to say, that was a pretty good yeah. one. But I, I'll even, I will get emails from and messages from high school students, for example, who have come up with their own theories mm -hmm. and things. And these are really precocious kids who are who are tr thinking seriously, thinking mm -hmm. hard about about physics and about science. And those are the kind of kids that I do try to explain more. Like I'll reply to them and try to explain much more about the scientific process and the fact that this is not because they're the ones who have this false impression um, because all they've ever seen is, you know, Einstein was an isolated genius that yeah. came up with theories yeah. that happened to be right. Yeah. And they don't, you know, so that's what they're doing. They're just, they want to be great and so they try to, you know, emulate what they th they think great people have done mm -hmm. rather yeah. than doing what, they act, what you actually need to do yeah. to be successful.